Hey you, I'm the Queen of Shade. Welcome to the interview. Don't forget to comment, like, subscribe. Oh, and hit my cash app to support your favorite content creator. Now let's get to the interview. Salutations, you foes. This is your fabulous leader, the Queen of Shade, coming to you with another special presentation. I am moving full speed ahead, talking to some very interesting people that I want to know and I feel that you should know. So without further ado, I want to bring someone to you who is quite interesting and has a lot of great things to say. We're going to hear his story. We're going to hear about a lot of things. And I'm excited about it. So if I'm excited, I know you can feel my energy. So while he tampers with his, con his contraption, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, I would like to introduce you to Mr. Loriana Ramos. I paused because you're messing with that camera. <laughs> I told him, listen, I told him, I said, listen, I'm not a perfectionist. I just know how to produce a segment. <laughs> Loriano Ramos, guys. This is who we're talking to, Loriano Ramos. How are you today, Mr. Ramos? Now you sound weird. What's going on? What you do? Well, no, we're not starting all over. This is the show. <laughs> I didn't do nothing. I stood here just like you told me to. I'm taking directions. You said, okay, you sound good. You know what it is? It's just probably a lot of space in the house, you know. Let's just say that. Anyway, how are you today? Pick up your coffee. I don't want to stress you. Pick up your coffee. <laughs> how do you take your coffee? Do you take your coffee black or with cream? I you say that because for years and years when I was younger, it was always cream and sugar. Now it's just black. I'm good. Yeah. Yeah. Black coffee. I still like my cream and sugar, but I don't drink coffee that often. Yeah. So how you know, are you today? You know, today, today um, got out pretty good. I'm good, but, you know, I, I took my son to the gym with me this morning. Um, we went early because I'm an early bird. Yeah. And when we got home, we knew what the plan was going to be. We had to tap this garage that's been killing us. I mean, it's just jam-packed, you know. So spent about a few hours out there, me and my boy and my wifey. And we was out there cleaning all morning long. And I was like, you know what? I need to get ready because I got this interview with Queen. So, you know, I kind of kindly excuse myself from the mess. You know, she's like, go ahead, babe, do you, you know, so love that about her. So Aww, it's, it's nice to see that they're supportive. Yeah, it's nice to see that they're supportive, that they support you because uh, you've been uh, you've been getting into trouble online a lot lately. Now you're doing interviews and now you are a silver fox and everybody knows it. And we'll talk about it, but uh, yeah, you got a lot going on now. It's, it's not so much business as usual anymore. No, uh, you know, my life has changed, you know, drastically, you know, um, in the last few months. So, so I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to have balance, you know, to figure it all out, you know, still being, you know, who I, who I am as always, you know, but this new stuff coming at me, you know, it's, 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 it's coming at me hard and fast. So I'm trying to figure it out. It's fame. You do a couple of viral videos and then you're in trouble. If that's what you call it, then that's fine. You know, I'm still trying to figure what that really means, quite honestly. You know what I mean? You know, you grow you you see you see famous people on TV or just just in general, you know about them. I, I'm not even nowhere near that. And I, I can't get in that right mindset yet. But you know, if it does come, you know, like you say, it's it's happening, then um I'll figure it out. I'm just not, it's just not not reality yet for me quite honestly well, well you want to know why because now we live in a different dispensation of time now no longer are our stars on television they're on tiktok <laughs> they're on instagram they're on twitter this is a whole new dispensation and a whole new, let listen you're not the only one 
all the, the, the labels and the handlers and the, and the corporations that had these stars, they had to adapt too. Right. Yeah. Nowadays, nowadays, a star doesn't have to sit, you don't have to wait a full month to buy a magazine off a newsstand anymore with, with, you know, information about your favorite celebrity, your favorite motivational speaker, your favorite public figure anymore. Nowadays, they turn around and when they want to to announce something, they head on over to Twitter or Instagram and boom, it's out there. What you mean? We need to know right now. You know, yesterday was was old, old news, you know, but I hear you like, right. That's yeah. funny because I don't watch much TV either. You know, it, it's typically, you know, um, at night when we lay down, get ready to, you know, go to bed, watch a little TV just to relax the mind. But most of the times I'm on this phone. You know, yeah. So I get yeah, it's crazy, Mr. Ramos, because this phone is, the phone is, Lord, I can't get away from that phone. I, I sleep with mine. That's how bad it is. But I, I, I run a business, so I need to know what's going on, when it's going on, where it's going on, how it's going on, and what I can do to make sure it keeps going on. I can see that in your Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so tell us, Mr. Ramos, where are you from? Where were you born? I was born in, in Bronx, New York, um, 1974, uh, oldest of, of three kids, um, uh, raised by a single strong Puerto Rican woman. Um, you know, we left, we left New York, uh, in 81, early 81. Um, you know, I have some cousins that are my age and older and, and growing up in New York, especially in the Bronx in the, in the mid early late seventies, wasn't the place, you know, so, mm. so part, you know, she moved us out to Cali and been out in Cali ever since, you know, um, grew up for the most part up in Ventura County area, uh, mm. about, about a couple hours north of LA, you know, um, was up there for the most part, and then came down to San Diego in 1996, and I've been here ever since, you know. Oh. Do you like the West Coast? That's all I really know, quite honestly. You know, I mm -hmm. got family everywhere, back in New York, Florida, Puerto Rico. Um, yeah, I, I love it. Um, it's 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 where where my roots are at, you know, where, where my kids are born, you know. So this this is it for me, you know. But you know, you know, that's what people, a lot of people don't understand about um, the history of California is that it is actually a very heavily uh, Spanish, you know, language and people state it. Like if you look and you do your research, a lot of people of Spanish descent, wherever they came from, but speaking Spanish, they moved to California it, it, and not, not just for the climate, but because everybody spoke the language, so it was easier to navigate. It was somewhere you could go and you didn't have to worry about winter. You didn't have to worry about it being too cold, you know? Cause you know, Puerto Rico, they're like, okay, this is an island, it's cold, what's that? You know, so it gets cold, but not blizzards, you know? Like can, I can only imagine you going from the Bronx to California and you're like, whoa, what you mean it's never gonna snow here? Like, like it's never gonna snow here again? Like what? Yeah, I can imagine that that was something to get used to. But yeah, California is a heavily Spanish spoken state. Yeah. And, and um, it's, it's pretty diverse, though. Don't get me wrong. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, we're about uh, less than 30 minutes uh, from the border. So, mm -hmm. um, down the street for the most part. You know? So, so there's, there's a lot of here. Um, in San Diego, you know, um, more, more, more Latin. Um, uh, of course we got, we got all kinds of folks out here, but, but you're right though. It's, 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 um, a lot of Spanish speaking people, I, me and myself, I, I know a good amount I can hang, you know, but, uh, when I was being raised by my mom, she spoke, she still to this day speaks, uh, Spanish very fluently. Um, her English is even broken, even after being, you know, on this planet for 60 plus years, but, um, she kind of went away from teaching us Spanish when we was growing up because, Believe it or not, there weren't a lot of bilingual teachers when when we were in school. Yeah. So she kind of backed away from that. Spoke it at the house, you know, for the most part, but then just let us be. And, and I, I wish she would have just, you know, still kept teaching us, you know, uh, the Spanish part. But don't get me wrong, I, I can hang and I know the words and, and have conversations, but I'm, I'm not gonna be able to, you know, you know, read intelligently, you know, when it comes to it. I, I know what I have to say to get myself, you know, in and out of the situation. Yeah, you know what it is. She wanted you to. She wanted you to have every um, 
advantage. And she knew that here in America, you needed to speak English. So, you know, even though that was a decision she made, it was for the better because one thing about America is, you know, like when I went to school, they insisted we have a language and I did for four years, I, I had Spanish. I had honor Spanish, I went to college with Spanish and that was a long time ago, <laughs> that was the year 2000. So I can still understand a lot, but as far as my two form commands, my conjugations of verbs, you know, I just, I remember like wash your clothes, lava, la, like, what was it? Lava, la, la ropa, you know, like you, the, the, you know, the, those two form commands, like it had to, you know, it's you do this. So yeah, they taught us a lot of, a lot of things, but, but Spain, Spanish um, is one of the more, to me, romantic languages. And everyone that I've met, no matter where they came from speaking Spanish, they always were very passionate people, passionate about family, passionate about faith, uh, passionate about, you know, their children, things like that. Like I said, family. So every Spanish person I've ever encountered had those really, you know, core values. And they also were very hard workers, very hard workers. And uh, everything they did was for the good of the family. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're out there, you've been out there. Hold on, I didn't hear you, wait, say something. You said something and I didn't hear anything. I was gonna say like, to your point, it, it, when you talk in Spanish, you know, someone who's talking Spanish, they're gonna talk to you either in, in, in a very passionate way, you know what I mean? Or, you know, they'll, they'll talk to you in English, but when they wanna get their point across and they talk to someone that they know Spanish, it, it's gonna be, you know, back and forth. You know? Yeah, that's, yeah. That's the level for that. Yeah. Yeah. I like that. I admire that. Yeah. Spanish men are beautiful men, as we can see. Um, so, yes, you're welcome. Um, so, California, all the way out there in California, four hours from L.A. You never took a stab at L.A.? Um, so, we kind of bypassed L.A., you know, but mm. it's funny um, um, I'm doing this, the opportunities are in L.A. So I got a couple of things going on where I have to, you know, drive up and down to LA and, and that's coming up here soon. Um, so there's that, that's where the action is, you know, um, I'm not so sure that I would, I would get up and move to LA. You know, it, it's, it's, it's pretty congested, you know, nothing wrong with it at all. It's just, just not my vibe. I'm, I'm good in San Diego for right now, but I'll definitely travel up and down, you know, do some business. Okay. Uh, we got to fill them in. Cause they're like, okay, this beautiful man is speaking to the queen. And what are they talking about? Uh, all right. So for those of you that don't understand, uh, Mr. Ramos here recently became a silver fox. Now we can see that he's a silver fox, but there's a group. So tell us about how you recently became a, a, a recognized silver fox. <laughs> so back in October, um, I had a, I posted a video. My like was like my second reel ever, you know, and it was just on a whim. And the thing went viral, you know. It was it was real simple to me, kind of funny, straight to the point. I used some background music that you know IG, one of the creators that put on there, and it went nuts, you know. And then so I, I kind of went with that and um, started posting some more reels. Didn't really know what I was doing. I, I'm, I'm gonna be very honest with you. I was just putting some stuff out there, and I found a little niche. And um, I get a call one day from a guy named Urban Randall, uh, which is the leader of Silver Fox Wad. And uh, super good guy, man. Um, came off the phone, you know, uh, very, very interested in me and, and telling me he was watching me and, and, and asked me if, if I wanted to meet up with the guys. Um, and it was right around the corner because when he reached out to me, it was, it was just after Halloween. Um, so it, and, the, and the first time I met him was two weeks into November. So it was, it was like, bang, bang, hey. We're going to be in Vegas, and I know you live in San Diego, so I'm mean, you closer because everyone else is scattered throughout the states. And I was like, all right, man, you know, let me bring it by the wifey and talk to her about it. And of course, everything is consulted with her. Um, and we met up in Vegas. And um, what I thought it was going to be uh, quickly was 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 not. So basically, I'm driving out there. I think I got this. You know, I'm, I'm gonna get some suits, you know what I'm saying? Put some suits on and, and look good and post some pictures with these guys because I can see what they're doing on IG. I got this. But when I got there, um, you know, I, I met some amazing men, um, uh, just just intelligent entrepreneurs, you know, black. And there's one white guy on there by the name of Stephen Atkins, also an amazing man. And um, I was blown away. I was like, I felt like I was out of my league. You know, I, 
this is not what I what I thought I signed up for. So, but the great thing about them is, you know, they embraced me. Um, there was a couple other uh, new guys as well. And we hung out all weekend, um, took some pictures, and we talked about what the group was all about. And we went about our way. And they were like, okay, well, you know, you're not a member yet. You know, we wanted to invite you out here because we want to see what you was all about. So, you know, go back home. You know, we'll be in touch, whatever or not. So um, second meeting was in New Orleans, which was just a few weeks ago. And, um, you know, my following went up. From the time that I met them in Vegas, I was about to hit 50K followers, you know. Um, before I got to New Orleans, I was just a tad under 200K followers. Mm. And you, you met up with them again. And this time I was, I was more open. I was like, man, it was so good to see them. I was anxious. I wasn't as anxious as I was in Vegas. Um, but this time around, I, I felt more comfortable around them. And they were, I could tell something was different about this meeting. You know, I, I felt like they was about to, you know, announce that that me and the other guys were going to be part of the group. And sure enough, you know, uh, Friday night, they announced it. And, you know, the whole weekend was a vibe, you know, in, in New Orleans. And so I'm official now. So I'm, I'm a Silver Squad Fox member, you know, proudly so, of. So tell me, what is the significance of the Silver Fox Squad? What do you guys do? So quite honestly, I, I did not know. Like I said, when I was in Vegas, I had no clue. I thought I was going up there, you know, take some pictures and do whatever not. Um, um, as the months have kind of unfolded, um, you know, they, they have a vision, you know, Irvin, the, the leader has a vision and, and essentially what it is, is really to, to give back to the community, uh, to some of the, the, the girls and boys and even young men who grew up without, you know, any kind of male figures in their life, you know, something as simple from, from learning how to tie a tie, you know, to, to the educational portion of it. And, and I'm going to be very honest with you. I didn't know much of it in Vegas, but in New Orleans, it, the, the plan was kind of revealed to us and I was excited. I was like, this is great. You know, I said, I felt like I was built for this because my whole life, I felt like I sacrificed, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm a provider, you know, I, I, I've been married for, for over, you know, 20 plus years and I've got two kids. So I know what it's like to, to take care of a small circle. But when he, when they told us that, you know, that's what the whole vision is for using Instagram and TikTok as, as a, as a, for leverage for this platform so we can put ourselves out there, but it's time to start giving back. So that those plans are coming in. Um, and I'm excited about that. We're just, we're going to start, you know, we have certain venues we're going to this year and, and we're going to try to hit every single community at every venue, you know, and just, and, and see what we can do for them. Wow. That's, a, you know what, what I, what I'm getting from this is that you are all men of a particular age. And you all fit the potential or the potentiality of being a father to someone that never had him. You know, I didn't grow up with my father. My father was a lunatic, <laughs> for lack of a better word. He did not announce himself nor maintain a presence in my life. And I turned out all right. I learned later how to close that hole, that need for him as well. And I didn't do that until I was in my early, late 20s, early 30s with a lot of therapy and a lot of help. But what I get from this is there are a lot of young men who just, who just need that presence in their lives, you know? And this, it's kind of, you know, they wanna say COVID is a pandemic, but especially in minority and uh, men of color at our communities, there is an absence of, I wanna say not just fathers, but of protectors, of watchers, of strong men. You know, I, I, a couple of years ago when we first started to see on social media, um, all of those horrific videos that popped up with the police being so brutal and arresting men. And I saw one that was very disturbing because he was walking his Rottweiler and they arrested him and shot the Rottweiler in the street. And he's crying because that's his dog and people are screaming, why did y'all do this? And why, why are y'all doing this? And back then I said to myself, they're removing the men from the community because if you remove the men, the women and the young men are left and then the community is, is wide open. 
I felt like they were they were taking the protectors, the knowledgeable ones, the ones that could pass down the information to these adolescent boys because these adolescent boys weren't ready to be men and leaders and rulers of the community. And then I saw, I kept seeing it and I kept talking to my grandmother, the queen mother about it. I said, they're taking the men because if you take the men, the generations of young men grow up reckless, wild. Nobody's there to help put them in check and remind them of who they are and their destiny and what they should be as men in their community, pillars in their community, fathers, brothers, sons, uncles in their community. So I really am moved. And this is a reason why I asked you to uh, come talk to me is because, am I right? This is your first interview since you were, since you've become a silver fox. Absolutely. Yep. This is mm -hmm. the very first. Mm -hmm. yeah. This is the first one. And, you know, I just, I want to say thank you because a lot of us young men, you know, they can say whatever they want to say. There's a man here. So being a man and not being and not being a really young man, I'm 39, I'll be 40 this year. I have had the opportunity to be to my nephews what their fathers never were. And the great thing about it is, you know, I truly believe that hate and bias are taught. Because see, I got my nephews when they were young, you know, and I had to hear it from the beginning. In the beginning, my youngest nephew was like, oh, his, his father would tell him, oh, your uncle, your other uncle, he shouldn't be wearing girls clothing and he shouldn't be doing this and he shouldn't be doing that. And the nephew had to come live with me. So then it became my responsibility to show him a different way or to deal with what, well, my dad said that you're this and my dad said that you're that and you shouldn't be doing this. And I had to sit down with him and say to him, I'm your uncle. I'll always be your uncle. No matter what I look like, I'll always be your uncle. And I'll always be there for you. I'll always love you. And our relationship strengthened over time. And I have some of the most amazing pictures because when I didn't believe in myself and I had first started in my musical career, because I've been in entertainment 20 years, but music is, is me being a professional singer has only been since like 2014, 2013, 2014. I remember my nephews being the first people that heard my music. And yes, I'm a soprano. So that's, they weren't used to hearing that come out of a man's mouth, especially a grown man that has been through puberty that hasn't been castrated, you know? So I remember their reactions. My, that same nephew gave me the thumbs up and smiled and was like, oh, that's good. I like it, I like it. And he used to, I used to watch him. He used to dance to my, my music and it made me feel so good because I was able to be to that young man, something that I never had. With that, family is very important to you. We were going to do this last Saturday, but you were insistent that you had to take your son to his baseball game. You had to be there for your son. And I just, I mentioned that, I usually don't go into family, but I mentioned that because it just solidifies and further reinforces the fact that you're a father, not just to your son, but now to many men, many communities. So it's just like, it's amazing to have you be recognized as that. Yeah, and, and I think when, when they had mentioned that that was, that's what the vision was. And I, I had to say to myself that, well, I'm already blessed. Yeah. I got two amazing kids. Yeah. And uh, like like you, I was raised without a father in, in the house. and and. But for who my mom was, her presence made up for his absence. Mm -hmm. so, so I grew up with those values of, of being a leader in the house because I was the oldest taking care of my brother and my sister. And to this day, that's how I am with, with my kids. And so when they mentioned that, I was like, I can do this. You know, I need to do this. You know, I really want to do this because I, I enjoy being a parent, being a father. You know, it, it's tough. Don't get me wrong. It's, it's not easy. You know, I mean. Um, but 
but it's so rewarding. And, and knowing that, that my kids look up to me and, and still say, I love you, dad, and, and kiss me. And they're teenagers, you know, even if I have to beg for one, you know, um, I said to myself, I can do this and, and, and I'm going to make this happen. So I'm excited about this family. It's a proud squad. You know what? I'm going to ask a personal question. I usually don't go personal, but I, I want them to see and I want to illustrate. Do you hug your son? Walking, I can. I can tell you right now. If if I don't, it, it, I'm getting up and I'm finding him in his room and I'm going and I'm gonna kiss him whether he likes it or not. Yes. But he's taller than me too. He, he just passed me up. See, I'm six one and he's about six two. So so when I go to hug him, it's like I'm I'm like his chin is up here to my to my nose. It, it, it's hilarious. So, but you know he willingly does it and and he knows it's coming. So both my kids. Yeah, I'm glad about that. I'm glad about that. So since being in this group, I realized something. You're you were already doing it, but uh, your your reels, your TikToks, they have gone through the stratosphere. And I mean, content wise, you'll give us with your hair out, the beard is white. And I read the comments. Everybody's like, your beard's so well manicured. It's so white. My God, they're looking at you. And you your hair is braided right now, but sometimes you have it out. And then what I, what I love that you do is that you'll be standing there and then it'll flip and you got on. You, you just dress, you just, you, you sharp. You just so sharp. Like, I'm just like, so I just sit there and I'm just like, oh my God. Like, <laughs> like you, you really, you really know how to make a statement with your reels and with your presence. And that's the thing because you are now a public figure. That's it, it kind of, it's crazy how it happens. But when you go viral, you become a public figure. You become something that people are looking for. You know, now they can't go a day without making sure they come back past your reels, see what you posted. How did you get so good at being able to do those transitions in your reels? Because you'll show the shoe and then the next thing, boom. Yeah, yeah you know, it, it's all about failure. You know, I failed more times than I've succeeded in my whole life. Yeah. And and when when um when I figured out how to do the transition, you know, I just it just it started coming to me, you know, and and everything about timing, you know, with with being introduced to the Silver Fox water and, and watching those grown men and seeing the way they dress, you know, I wanted that. So I, I figured I, I would have to implement, you know, certain things in my reels where, where it got me one way and then, you know, bam, you know, show them, you know, show them what I got coming. So um, I got good and don't get me wrong. It don't take one take. It takes me lots of takes and, 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 and I'm a Virgo and I'm a perfectionist by nature. Yeah. But it, if one looks good, I'm like, I can do it better. I can do it, but next thing you know, it's it, 70, take 90, take 99, and, but I'm having fun, and it, it's, it's, you know, it, it's creating that right content, because if, if it's on my page, that means I felt it, and it was good enough for me to release it. If it's not on there, then believe me, there's thousands of them that, that are not on there, and y'all might like it, but I'm not going to put it out there, so. Well, I also like that you are, again, speaking about ownership of your own content. You own it. Mr. Virgo, I'm a Libra. I'm right, I'm right behind you. I'm after you. Yeah, I, I'm not about perfection. I'm about production. <laughs> Everything I've done has, has not been perfect, but it has been posted. <laughs> you know, but you know what I do? My, my philosophy is a little different. I understand yours and I, I respect it. Mine is a little different because I will post something that I was really passionate about. Like I, like I post sometimes, like I have to watch these wigs because they're not my hair. So sometimes a little lace will show or something and I won't see it till the playback. But what I said was so powerful in the take that I just let it ride. And, and the reason why I let it ride is because my attitude is, all right, you saw me make a mistake. I'll do better next time. I'll get it next time. So I let it out there and I'm like, all right, fine. Because if y'all say, oh, that was a tacky ass outfit. Wait till you see the next outfit. It ain't going to be tacky. You know, like that's, it, it's kind of a game I play with myself. It's like, you know, cause I look back and I, and I do, I have it too. I look back and I'm, I'm looking and I'm like, okay, this gotta be right. This gotta be right. This gotta be right. This gotta be right. And then I see the error and I'm like, but the error doesn't outweigh everything else. So I'm like, I got to let this fly. 
And I get mad about it. I do. I get mad about it because I'm like, damn it. I'm like, so today I made sure there was no lace being seen because I'm like, look at here now, you know, or lipstick on my teeth or, you know, like I'm just like, ah, you know, but I've learned to just kind of like, it gives them something to look forward to. It's like an anticipation, like, okay, let's see if she gets it right this time. (laughs) Let's see if she gets it right, you know? So um, my goodness. Your wife is a, an avid supporter. You said that you've been married for over 20 plus years. Right, right, right. Wow. We've been married since, uh, since 2001 and married since 2005. Wow. That's amazing. Like, that's amazing because, you know, relationships like that last even when fame crashes into them, because that's what happens fame crashes into your relationship and it's like, oh my God, I have to make all of these concessions. I have to change things. I have to do things differently. But what I love is when you've been with someone that long, that stands the test of time because it's like, okay, you're looking at it and it's like, we, it's not us. You know, when I was young, go, go, go ahead. You were going to say something. I was just agreeing with you. Yeah. No, because when I like it was it was crazy because I've never had a significant other. And the crazy thing about it was it wasn't for lack of trying. It just was that I wasn't willing to allow what I really wanted to do, which was entertain. I wasn't I wasn't willing to let that take a backseat. And I even had people tell me in in the beginning of my career, well, you can't have a significant other because you're young and you gotta you gotta focus on your career and, and a significant other is not gonna understand the attention you get, the demand that you get, all the comments from you know the women that say, Oh, you're so beautiful, you're so this, oh daddy, oh this, oh that. Like they're not gonna be able to understand that, they're gonna get jealous and you're it's gonna take away from your career. But I would venture to say after 20 years, she look at you like, oh, that's his face. <laughs> <laughs> you bring up a great point. Um, she's human, okay, and, and and gotta respect that. So when this all happened, you know, of course she was she was feeling a certain kind of way about it, and didn't quite understand how how to you know take it all in. So we've had discussions and multiple discussions, and and listen, I'm not out here with any hidden agendas. You know, my bio says I'm I'm married. My it, it, I'm a father. You know, I, I get it. People are gonna say what they're gonna want to say, um, but my wife is she has she has um, persevered through all this and, and she's just a champ, you know, and she, she gets it, you know, I mean, for lack of better words, she understands the assignment, but she is my rock in all this. So, I mean, she, w- without her, you know, support from the very beginning, it would have been easy for me to say, okay, well, this is not for me then. Let me go back to my, my 11 hour shift that my, my grind that I have for the last 20 years, you know, continue doing what I'm doing, you know, but, but she said, go ahead, go ahead, try it. You know, and, and, and here I am, you know, and, and without that, you know, I, I wouldn't be here. So, you know, I love her pieces, you know, she, she, she's amazing. And, and but don't get me wrong. I mean, they're, most of the comments are, are what they are, you know, um, they're, they're a byproduct, you know, as I like to say, of what I really want to try to do out here. You know, I wouldn't put myself out there like this if, if I didn't know if I knew people were going to say what they're going to say. They are, you know, but honestly, I, if I were to break it down, it's like 90% of them are positive. You know, whether they be about how I look, you know, what my content is, there's a small percentage out there that 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 are negative and and I can deal with that, you know, but but she she's amazing and she's handling it really good. Yeah, I'm yeah. glad to hear that. And you know, you have amazing showmanship. And I, I would I would venture to say that's because you're a Virgo. Michael Jackson was a Virgo. Beyonce's a Virgo. Amazing, like amazing showmanship. You know how to do that because I, I showed my grandmother one of, one of your videos and she I was just like, look at him. You, you work out. You take such great care of yourself. Your hair is always done, whether it's out or not. Your beard is always well manicured. You know, I don't see it as doing anything other than what you do for yourself anyway. Yeah. Yeah. You know, um, back to the Virgo thing, whatever the case, it's always been like that for me. Yeah. You know, I mean been grinding for a long time you know um even before I went viral so this is this is who I've always been yeah. you know um, but now that it's out there you know people want to know you know I mean how do you keep the beard so why why is the top black and the beard white you dye it you know absolutely not I earned every single one of these white followers just so you know okay this comes from life right here this is this is experiences this is marriages as kids this is being broke being dead you know you know, it's everything, you know what I mean? And, um, you know, I embrace it and, and, and I love every part of it. So, um, 
yeah, it, it's who I've always been, you know, just, just now the world knows, so, and they see it. Yeah, I agree. And, and the great thing I love about the exposure is that now you can kind of put together products for your beard and, <laughs> excuse me, products for your beard and, you know, different things. You can kind of bring people in because, you know, the first thing, because I made the mistake. How about that? I made the mistake so I can pay it forward. So when you turn around and now that you have all of this attention, right off the bat, you want a product, whether it's t-shirts, whether it's your face on t-shirts, whether it's your likeness, your image, you want to have some kind of merchandise that people can take away a, a piece of you without actually getting a piece of you, if you understand what I'm saying, you know, because that way it starts to monetize, you know, because I, like even with me, I was, I'm I 20 years, I went viral six years ago. I was so into the viral sensation and trying to work and keep it that I didn't come out with products right away. And I paid the price for that. I did, you know, now, it's a little better. It's a lot better, but you know, yeah, it's a lot better, but I, I can also tell you, you know, most people that be go viral, it doesn't automatically put money in your pocket immediately. Right. You know? So it, it, you, you have to start thinking now being newly viral, what product, what service, what can I offer that, I can take and start to get paid from. And with you, I see it being a part of the Silver Fox um, Association and group, that's one way. But also I'd imagine that, and I, I'm surprised you haven't, we, we haven't said it, but um, are you getting requests to come and host and, and show up places and be places yet? So, so yeah, so with, with that being said, um, like I'll do some promo advertising on my, on, on my paper. Um, so I do have a couple uh, company people that I'm working with. Um, and, but back to what you said, it, it's not instant, fa instant fame as far as money goes. Absolutely not. It, you you got to work for it. You know yeah. what I mean? It, it just as hard as not on my regular shift at work. You know what I mean? It, it's, it's, it's there, but I got people, you know, trusting me, you know, with my followers and, and they like what they see. So I got a couple of things working with, um, you know, for my beard, for example, um, I work with a company by the name of Clean. It's spelled K-L-E-N. People think it's pronounced clean, but it's clean. So, you know, it's a great product, you know, all natural, you know, vegan oil and, and, and beer balm. Um, and, and I got a couple other things going on. So, so they're, they're great people. They're, they're taking a chance on me, which is amazing, you know, as well. So I, re I pay it back to them and, and try to give them the right kind of content, you know, so they can get some traffic on their page. So that, that's the grind part of it. So, um, as far as like showing up and stuff, I'm more dependent as of the moment with with Silver Squat Fox, you know, because um, Silver Fox, I'm sorry, um, because they're the ones who are actually, you know, where we're, we're showing up, you know, that that group, that organization. Um, um, let me correct myself. This so it's an organization. They're not a group. They're they're not. It's not a club. You know what I mean? Right. It's not a, not a group. Um, so with the venues that we're showing up with, you know, this year we're we're hitting Philly and in. in in April, uh, we're, we're in, in June, we're in Houston. Um, July, we're, we're back in New Orleans, you know. Um, so we're, we're even hitting a couple places. We're doing the Essence Awards, the Stella Awards. Uh, we got the stuff going on and then we got some more stuff happening. So back to your question, as far as showing up, I'm showing up with my group, with my organization. That, that, that's what's happening. When I get more exposure and, and that time comes on the side, absolutely, I wanna, I wanna figure that out. But I gotta remember, I got to find a balance because I've been with my company for 21 and a half years. So it's going to get to a point to eventually where I, I just might have to, you know, remove myself from that situation, but it, it's got to make sense. You know, yeah. that's, that's my bread and butter. That's, that's my, my, my insurance for my family, for myself. That's, that's what pays the bill. So until this other stuff does something like that, or even surpasses it, then, then that, that'll come into play. But right now I'm, I'm, I'm grinding on both ends. So yeah. it's, it's trying to find that balance. You know, I feel like you're built, you're built for it. You can do both. You can do both until either one of them decides to subsidize the other, <laughs> yeah. supplement, 
I mean, you know, when you can supplement your, your income, not subsidize, when you can supplement your income and it's like, okay, I don't, I can do this and I, I make this, but like, I'm already sitting here, like the things like with essence and all of those things, it's going to put you before a lot of eyeballs. It's going to put you before a lot of eyeballs and people are going to come to your page and they're going to notice that you are, you know, what you are and a talented person and a creative person. And I want you not necessarily to dread it. I want you to be excited about it because this is, it, it's an amazing opportunity and it can take you so far. It can take you so, yes, yes. It can take you so far, but you know, like you said, and, and that's what I love because that's another, that's another paternal instinct. Like if your son came to you and said, dad, I'm going to be in this group and we're going to travel and we're going to do this and we're going to do that. And he's in college. You're going to tell him like, son, you're in college. You know, you got to, they got to work around your schedule because at the end of the day, this degree is going to make sure you're okay. You see? So, and that's what I'm hearing. I'm hearing you do it for yourself. I'm hearing you be to yourself the father that you've never had. So yeah, you know, so it, it's, it's something, but um, tell us just a sidebar. So what kind of man are you? Like, are you an outdoorsy man? Like, what do you like to do for fun? Like when, when, when you're trying to let down your hair, what do you like to do for fun? You know, I knew that question was coming. I really did. And I try to prepare myself for that question. Yes. But keep in mind, before I did this, mm -hmm. I, yeah, it was, it was, it was work every single day, you know, uh, both my kids have extra activities. My, my daughter was doing, um, she took a little break. You know, she was doing competitive cheerleading. My son's always done multiple sports. So wifey and I always it revolved around our time was, was always around the kids. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? But what I like to do for fun, fun, honestly, is, is, is I love cooking. You know, got that from my mom. You know, um, I, I, I'm a homebody. That's what I really am. You know what I mean? I, I like being in my home, you know, and 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 just relaxing um I, I don't get out much now because that was the funny thing when, when when my wife was like well now you're traveling now you're doing that you don't even like leaving the house you know i'm like i know i know but but now it's starting to rub off on me i'm looking forward to going to these here and there and, and and have fun so i'm coming out late in life for the most part you know what i mean i i've just been my head's been down and just been working my butt off for the last 20 plus years you know doing what i normally do um but it's and, and, that, and I think that in itself, in all honesty, took some passion away from me. It really did. It just, you know, being responsible and adulting, you know, that I, I couldn't do that. And then, you know, every other night, maybe go hang out with some buddies or, or on the weekend, go do this and that. It, it just, I, I just got too busy being responsible and, and life just started passing me by. And, and this came and I'm like, hmm, okay, well, let's, let's try this, see what happens. And, and now I'm getting out more. So um, I love being with these men that I'm with, you know, when we go out, because these are men that, that I look up to and, and men that, that I believe, you know, can be such positive and impactful people in the community and just in, in the world and TikTok and IG. And, and I'm learning a lot from them. So uh, being around them is, is starting to be a passion, you know, but, but I, I do miss, obviously, when I'm gone for a few days, I love coming back and seeing the smile on my, on my wife and, and my kids. So that's, it's, it's a little bit of both. You know, I want to say to you what I used to have to say to myself, time didn't pass you by, it didn't pass you by when life went, you, you moved on in life and you did what you had to do. I started my, my career in entertainment at 19. I was diagnosed with bipolar type one PTSD and acute anxiety. And it took me 15 years to get them under control. Wow. And now that I'm out here, I'm out here at 40. Hmm. What I notice and what I love is that I'm still doing what I was called to do, what I was created to do, what I love to do. So I, I don't look at the timing, the time, I because that used to bother me. I, you know, there was this song, I forget, it's from, it's from one of the uh, Broadway shows, but uh, Send in the Clowns. Uh, is the song and she says you know losing my time or losing my timing so late in my career you know she talks about that but uh no my thing is it can happen when it's supposed to happen because i truly believe the 20 plus years grounded you 
That's what you needed to do. That's what you had to do. You have different goals. You have different dreams. You have different agendas. Now, yes, we all wanted to do a whole lot of stuff when we was younger. We did. Yeah. We, sure. all, we all did. But um, last time I checked, we're still alive. Yeah, that's right. That's right. And feeling it too, and starting to feel it too. So that's 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 invigorating right yeah, now. Yeah, we're we're still kicking. Yeah, so we we <laughs> got time. The doctor says we're good. We're good. Right. right. You, know? you know, and and my thing is, I always do say, I'm so glad that it happened so late in my life because imagine if it had happened at 19, with all that I had to face, I'd have been burnt out by 25. You you bring up such an excellent point because. Who I am today was nowhere near I was 20 plus years ago. I, I needed this. Mm-hmm. I, I needed that. I needed that that grounding mm-hmm. so I can be here and understand this. At 19, no, this would have been pissed away in six months. Mm-hmm. I would have known how to deal with it. I would have burnt and crashed. Mm-hmm. So would I. So, yeah. so <laughs> you know, the divine waited until we had actually lived and actually experienced and actually knew what it was like to be responsible. Because uh, let's, I'm going to just say something here, because a lot of the stars that are stars are not responsible for themselves. Mm. They have mm. all kinds of handlers. There's all kinds of people. Someone decides what they wear. Someone decides what their hair looks like. Someone decides, oh, you shouldn't talk to this publication because it's too ethnic. Someone mm-hmm. does that, you know, mm-hmm. whereas we have lived our lives. So we, we kind of feel when something's right. We, we can go off it like, okay, no, I can, I can play with this. But we, we know, like we got that one eye, like, all right, now don't get stupid on me. Like, right, 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 right. right. Exactly. Yeah, because I'm not about, I'm not listening. This ain't my first time at the rodeo. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I this ain't the first time I've saddled up a horse and rode it before. Like, yeah. you know, yeah. like hold on now, I'm watching you. Like, and uh, to be honest, even in my life, I'm happier. I had an interview the other night and I cried, and I cried, mm. I cried, but I cried because of my family situation. You know, I'm a very family oriented person, and my family is just not that. Mm. It's just not that. So what has it forced me to do? I have a chosen family. I had to make my own family. You know, I don't have any children of my own, though I'm mother to father to a lot of people out here now. I got a whole tribe. But, you know, my family who I thought were supposed to, you know, do these things or be here or go here, it's just not that way. So I cried, but the person was, she's a spiritual mother to me. She said, listen to me. She said, they had the same choice as you did. You chose to be responsible. And now your responsibility you can use in your career because even in my career, I've been at this desk for six years. I don't go to clubs. I don't go, mm. to, I don't go to movies. I don't eat out. I create content. Mm. I get on here and I talk to amazing people such as yourself. This is what I do. I'm not, you know what? There is no area in my life where I'm reckless, not a single area. And it is what it is. And she reminded me of that. She said, listen here, you're a grown man. You, you're, that's fine. We all, we all feel that sometimes. Oh, I didn't have a childhood. Oh, my childhood was hard. Oh, I grew up too fast. Oh, I was parentified. I was responsible because I'm the oldest of four children. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. know, but guess what? Yeah. It's all right though. It Speaking works. Speaking great truth. Well. Yeah it, works, yeah, it works out. It works out for us. And my thing is this. I tell myself all the time, I'm 40 years old. If I become a millionaire or a billionaire tomorrow, at least I, I, I say to myself before, like, you know, just b- ballpark number. I say, I at least got 20 years. 20 mm-hmm. years mm-hmm. of being a millionaire, billionaire is better than 40, not at all. Right, right. Because you know, right. I've been living 40, not at all. So right. 20, 20 years, even 10 years would be more than I could have ever dreamed, hoped, or imagined. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. You got that 20 number like me too. I'm thinking the same way too. It's 20. Okay, yeah, I got I'm, I'm 47. You know, yeah. uh, 20 is about right, you know. You know that's about right. Yeah, 20, 20 is good. 20 is good. Taking yep. fly around, meet everybody, see everybody, be wealthy. 20 is good. You know why it's good? It's because when you was younger, you were like, no, we, I got plenty of time. Exactly. Plenty of time. 
Because when you, you you 20, next thing you know, you're 30, and next thing you know, you're 40, but you think you got plenty of time. Mm-hmm. You slow down and, and you grind like you and I have both been doing. You start appreciating every single second moment of the day because that 20 years will probably be better than the 40 years I had originally. Yep. Because I, I that's that's what I want. I want to be able to look back and be like, yeah, I did that. You know, so these next 20 years, I'm going to love that one. I'm getting goosebumps. I have this so a weird ability. We haven't talked about it, but I'm a shaman, an oracle, a prophet, and a seer. And I am getting goosebumps because that just lets me know that spirit wants me to say something to you. It's my way of them kind of tugging on me. And what I need to say is what I hear is that you've got you're destined for a lot of success. You're going to touch a lot of lives. You're going to be. Um, you're going to influence a lot of people and it's going to be good. It's, mm. going to be good. it's going to be good and get it. I hear it's starting off slow and it's starting off l- slower than expected. Not as solid as you want, but uh, it will get there and you will. And I, and I hear that when it comes time to make a decision, whether you stay with your hustle or whether you walk into the pantheons of the earth and sky, like as as a star, it'll be comfortable. And I hear the word smooth transition. It'll be smooth. It won't be rocky. So you wait, that's just, that's that's to let you know, you wait until it's smooth. Mm -hmm. Then you make that transition. If it's not smooth, don't make that transition. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, people will promise you a lot of things and, and never deliver. So, it, it, yeah, people coming at me, you know, and, and they mm-hmm. saying this and saying that and trying to sound quick and smooth about it. And and I, I have to sit there and think about it. I'm like, yeah. like you said earlier, you know, I said I, I've been around the block. Mm-hmm. before, okay, So I, I I understand you, you you doing business and you got contracts and all that. But if it don't feel right, I'm not going to give you an, I'm going to give you an immediate no. If you need to answer right now, the first thing that's coming out of my mouth is no. Yeah, I did that in my career. I said no to everything. No to mm-hmm. a major record deal. No to just just no to everything. Walked away from American Idol, all kinds of things. Wow. It just wasn't, it wasn't for me. I was in Paris modeling, modeling, and said, nope, this ain't it. Mm. And my my bipolar disorder would start to act. It was like, no, you're in danger, you're in trouble. So then I would start to have manic episodes and like and these things, these psychological or behavioral changes actually saved my life because it kept me from signing contracts that would prohibit me from ever erecting my brand, my own brand ever in life. Wow. And, you know, and what I find about the entertainment industry is as long as you're a fad, as long as you're a trend, they love you. But the problem with a fad and a trend is something else pops up, something else comes along and now it's the fad and the trend and you're looking at you're looking at it like well I still I got, I got this house I got to take care of. I got this brand new car I got to take care of. and they're looking at you like oh tough break your time has passed right right you're like my time has passed I still got a lot of life in me you know how many yeah. stars are not okay with that they were told oh no we can't use you no more your time is gone mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, wait a minute. Who are you to tell me that my time is gone? But they signed those pesky contracts that gave other people permissions and authorities in their lives. So can't it do anything about it. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. like even with, even with me, like, yeah, it's late in my life. It is late. My counterparts are running around 23, 21 years old. But I know it's right. It's right. Yeah. For me. It's right for me. And, you know, it's kind of crazy because I make all this music. That's, that's what I really started doing in 2013. I make all this music and I'm not the tour person. I'm not the go on tour and be on tour. All, no, that's not me. I'm the digital guy. Mm-hmm. I put mm-hmm. the music out. You may get some visuals from me. And then I go on back to doing what I know to do, which is this. This is what I love to do. This is what, this is what I'm supposed to do. You know, I hear people going crazy because, you know, my, you know, people, I, I have these new intros and outros to these mo- these uh, interviews now, conversations, and people are like, oh my God, the music, oh my God, oh my God. Yeah, it's mine. I own it. It's mine. Mm-hmm. Music in the front, music in the back. I own it. And then what, what did I do? I was able to turn around and, and it opens up, it opens up and it says, you're a bougie bitch and your mother is too. So what did I do? I went on over to my merch store where I designed my own merch and I put on a shirt. 
you're a boozy bitch and your mother is too. I love it. I love it. <laughs> you're going to say, hey, send me a large, please. <laughs> right. Say like, hello. Like, you know, like, mm -hmm. hello. You know, and that, and I was able to do that. It's mine. Right. You know, some people, they say, oh, well, you're not doing this and you're not doing that. I'm like, baby, but how long are you going to last? Mm -hmm. I'm free. I'm here. Yeah. Yeah. Here. Doing it right. Yeah. And get this. My bills are paid. I live in a two bedroom townhouse. I don't live in a chateau yet, but the bills is paid in here. The cable is working. The Wi Fi mm -hmm. is working. What am I? What am I stressed about? Yeah. That's kind of the reason why I like being at home because everything's paid for. Yes. <laughs> yes. I, don't, I already paid for it. Yes. Let me enjoy it. You yes. Know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, I'm the same way. Like people are like, oh my God, you know, Queen, you said you didn't make any money. I'm like, yo, but you don't understand everything in here is paid for. Every, <laughs> every dress. I don't have to try and run out and get all of that. I, I got right. it all. I got all the earrings. I got all the jewelry. I got all the dresses. I got all the hair. Like, I, that's why I don't leave. I'm like, uh, where am I going? All my provisions is at home. At home. Right. I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm an introvert myself, but they, they call me an extroverted introvert because, and I see it in you too. You can you can give a show if you need to, but at the end of that show, you walking out that side door to go home. <laughs> That's me right. out the right. side door. Yeah, I yeah. came yeah. yeah, I slayed you. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> yeah, we took pictures and out the side door. Yes, you know, yeah. Tell your wife put the car up to the side door. <laughs> <laughs> she already got. She already yeah. got a room. Yeah, like, let's get out of here. Like, let's get out of here. We'll hit the, we'll the diner at the drive through on the way home. Like, yeah. You know, and you know what's so funny? The stars that have always had the greatest impact, they come later in life because, and they're of a particular age because they have the lessons. They have the lessons. One of my, one of my most, one of my favorite actresses. Jennifer Lewis, she wrote the book. Uh, she's the mother of Black Hollywood. She's been in everything. Uh, what she? I'm trying to think a reference for you. Did you see What's Love Got to Do with It? Absolutely. Okay, she was the mother of Angela Bassett. Oh goodness. Bassett. Oh yeah. yes. I know who she is. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. That oh, she's amazing. Yeah. Yes, that's yeah. Jennifer Lewis. Wow. So, so get this. She says, and I love it because it's all hers. She says, the elevator to success is broken. Take the stairs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That woman. And, and I love that because they come like the, the greats, they come with all this wisdom. Right, right. Wait. It's the journey. It's the journey. You know what I mean? I, I, I don't want to do it any other way. You know, I don't want no shortcuts, you know, and, and, and I, and, and when you were saying that about her, I, I was, I was hearing her voice, yeah. you know, cause, cause how she, how she puts that, you yeah. know, that, that tone out there when she, when she acts, it's yeah. amazing. So yeah, I mean, no shortcuts, you know, I mean, I've already grinded this long, you know, and, and I, I don't want to hear if it can get anywhere, you know, I, I want to be able to embrace it and experience it the right way. So yeah, that, that sets really well with me. You know what? And that's a good thing because shortcuts you pay gravely for. You pay gravely for shortcuts in this business. I, I turn down shortcuts. I don't want them. Gotcha. gotcha. I've, had, I've had people ask me, oh, go on tour here. Go do this. You can open up for me. You can do this. You can do. Why? Because it doesn't fit my plan. It doesn't fit my agenda. Mm -hmm. And I'm and I'm one of those people where it's like you gotta hang on. If you if if I hang on long enough, I'll hit pay dirt. <laughs> if yeah. I hang on long enough, and, yeah. and, and I'm like, listen, it's been 20 years. Hey, I'll yeah. I keep hanging on. I keep hanging on. I'm gonna keep on hanging on. I'm gonna keep on hanging yeah. on. Because There's a plan for us. There's a plan for us. There's a plan for us, and that plan was in facilitation and orchestration long before we got here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Long before mm -hmm. I ever had what I've had happen to me in my life, the divine spoke and said, you're going to be this. You're yep. going to be this. You're mm -hmm. going to have this. So yep. I just, when all of it gets a little crazy and wonky, I like to say wonky when it's things start to get wonky, I center myself. And I'm like, I remember the plan. Remember the plan. And then, and then I asked myself, what's the plan? I don't really know. <laughs> 
<laughs> but I know to stand still. <laughs> yeah, that's right. That's, that's right. what I do. Like, that's what I do. Like, what's the plan? I don't know. Because I God, yeah. God only knows how I got here. God yes. only knows. You know, like, I'm, like, li- like literally, God only knows. <laughs> but I'm here. And I didn't take any shortcuts. And what's coming out of my mouth is right. That's the thing. It's right. People listen. I can tell. People, I can tell. Yeah, people listen. And, and, and it's influence. They, they listen to what you say. And if they're willing to listen to what you have to say, they'll also be willing to pay for what you have to say. So I'm just, I'm sitting here careening and yeah. doing what I'm doing. And so are you. We're just doing what we're doing and we're doing what we what feels right for us. I love that. So tell me, as far as, now let's dream a little bit. As far as places you would love to see outside of the country, where are some places you would like to travel to, just to travel to? Ooh, you ooh would, yeah. yeah. Yeah, come on. Well, yeah, absolutely. Um, so so for my 50th, you know, was talking to wifey about it. I'm like, I need to be on an island somewhere. I really need to be somewhere where there's white sands, blue water. I need to be away for like 10 plus days. None yes. of this, you know, three nights and, and two days stuff. I need to be gone for a while. So that that's the plan, really. It's 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 wherever, you know, where, where Greece, Turks, Caicos, you know, Bahamas. I don't care. I just need to be somewhere, something like that. Um, that's one. The second thing is I, I'm, I love history. So, I mean, if there's ever an opportunity where I can get out and just explore, you know, let's talk Europe, you know, let's talk, you know, um, you know, uh, South America, someplace, you know, where I can just get out and just start seeing things that I've read about my whole life, you know, and, 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 and I always wonder what it'd be like to be on a different, you know, country, you know, so, so mostly the island first, and then we'll see what happens after that. But, um yeah i don't want to be just in the united states you know but even though the united states has a lot of great places that, yeah. that you can go visit you know but i need to be in an island somewhere i really do you know you know what's so funny before you even said it the first place out of your mind out of your mouth i heard greece i heard, <laughs> I heard greece. but it, we'll see we'll see because because get it we're gonna follow you we're gonna follow your social media come so on we're gonna, we gonna we'll see you know come on. And yeah, that's, I'll take that's y'all. the thing. We we <laughs> with you for we're with you for the long haul. So that, that's what happens. We're all going to support and be there. And there's someone in your group that I recognize. Okay. And the Silver Foxes. Let me just see if I can pull that up very quickly. He, I, I want to say his, I want to say his screen name is like Yup, the real Winston Warrior. Oh, 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 I recognize oh. him. Yes, I've spoken to him before. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So, so uh, Winston um, um, also does music too. Yeah. You know, so so he's an amazing R and B singer yeah. as well. Yeah. Um, he, um, in all honesty, um, the first time when I went to Nove- uh, to Vegas and met everybody, he, he was one of the first members that I actually bonded with. Yeah. Um, and and um, I got very vulnerable with him. Yeah. Um, to we were start, we started talking we were at at a late brunch and we just had some conversations and and we ended up talking for a long time and and um, that's when I, I I just started more and more respecting these men because my job was to as I told myself was to try to get to know each one of them as much as I could you know but but let it happen organically I didn't want to just force you know like some sort of speed dating thing you know I, I really wanted to to talk to everybody and and Winston was the first person that I actually um bonded with you know and and he's an amazing man he's an amazing man and um i'm I'm glad you brought that up because yeah he is he is a special person he really is i I remember asking him uh what did i ask him years ago i want to see if it's still in the messages hold on because we yeah here we go hey hey glad you are well no worries it just happened i woke up woke up one day it's thanksgiving that was 2019 (laughs) <laughs> yeah he said in there and there poof like i was asking him about his blue check and okay. he said hey hey glad you're well no worries it just happened i woke up one day right before thanksgiving and it was there mm. that was, and get it that's the same way it happened to me okay. i was just working my ass off online and i woke up one day and a blue check was there you know, and he was telling me that. And he and he said to me, he says, you know, I'm an artist with some um, charting music hit. So he was saying, you know, or also it could have been my modeling or me or through me repping brands. Well, he said, he said, um, 
or maybe me being verified on Twitter also, because he's verified on Twitter as well. Mm -hmm. He said, not sure, but it just happened. Sorry, I couldn't provide you with a direct path, sigh. No, but yeah. I've been I've been speaking to him. That was 2019. I've been talking to him for a while. He's he's an amazing man. And 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 I noticed him when you posted the video and I saw everybody. I saw I remember your face very distinctively and I remember his very distinctively. Mm -hmm. so you guys, both of you guys stood out to me, both very amazing men. And it's just like, wow. Well, I, I, I recently, I see, I see you got your son, like you said, in the gym, he plays multiple sports, beautiful man, young man. And he was in there deadlifting or, you know, not deadlifting. What's the, what's the squatting? squatting. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Squatting. He was squatting and there you are the proud dad taking the video. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, it's, it's, it's cause I, I, I hate saying this, but, but yes, I've been so busy. He's been so busy. You know what I mean? We, the, you know, he's a teenager, you know, he's, he's, he's about to be 16 in April. My daughter's about to be 14 in April. They're, they're two years and two weeks apart and they're both April babies. Yeah. And um, it, it just, you got to be able to find time to, to, to continue building relationships with, with your kids, yeah. uh, people in general, but with my kids is super important to me. Uh, they just, they mean everything to me. And, and, and sometimes you got to drag them, but nothing feels better when they want to voluntarily go with you. Yeah. And, and we talked about this last night and he was like, yeah, dad, let's, let's get up early and let's go to the gym. I'm like, yeah, you know, I'm going to be there. So, you know, plus he's, he's learning how to drive. So he's just close to getting his learner's permit. So I got him driving as much as I can, you know, cause I gotta, I gotta feel comfortable when that license comes that he can, he can drive to school, which is not too far from us. But the other thing too, that, that makes me very anxious is that he'll be driving my daughter with him. So now I got both kids going to the same high school while he's driving. So it is my responsibility, my job to make sure that he knows how to drive, you know, so good that I feel comfortable going to work every day, knowing that they made it to school. Okay. So I, right now I'm going through some anxiety with that, but um, yeah. 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 I love having them with me, man. I really do. Yeah. We can hear your anxiety, <laughs> but that's all right. It's going to listen. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. It's going to be all right. Listen, yeah. one thing about parenting, when you're a dad, you're putting it into them. So you're going to teach them. If you teach mm -hmm. them, then he'll know, you know? Yeah. yeah. Uh, some parents, they just look at you like, oh, my kid is supposed to just get it through osmosis. And you're like, okay, that's <laughs> not how it works. You gotta, you gotta put it in them. You, you gotta, yeah. you gotta actually put it in them. A yeah. lot of parents miss that lesson. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> no, but um, give me three words that inspire you, empower you. Absolutely. Um, God, family. And discipline. Discipline. Yeah. 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 21 that's, years, 21 years at the same job. That's discipline. It is. It means everything to me. It's, it's, I've got this saying, I said, you know, motivation is going to disappoint you, you know, at some point, or the other discipline will get you through it, no matter what. Yeah. You might not like it, but you, you got to get to work and, and you might not like it, but you got to get to the gym to see results. You might not like it, but you Sometimes, you, most times you got to stay at home and cook, you know, because you don't want to be out there footing that note every time when you want to eat out, you know. Yeah. So it's the discipline for me is, is huge and important. And, and, and um, my family sees it. I, I'm like a robot. I get up the same time every single day. I'm home pretty much the same time every single evening, you know. But um, one thing we didn't really talk about or expand about on this interview was, was, was my faith and how strong it's gotten, you know, over the last few months. Um, I, I started feeling this profound feeling you know uh, come over me not too long ago it was it was kind of right before or after i went viral and it just something was hitting me and and i knew i knew that 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 it was it was a calling from him and and all along I, i've, I've kind of run away from him i really have but but i've totally embraced him and and that is that is my cornerstone of of why i'm even here today talking to you yeah. you know that's 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 that plan that we talked about that was already in already happening before I was even a, a twinkle in someone's eye. So, I mean, that's, those are my three words, God, family, and discipline. Yeah. Yeah. I like to hear that you're a man of faith. I like to hear that. Doesn't yes. work for everybody, but it works for you. <laughs> like it is because at the end of the day, that's what gets you through, you know, because life happens and it's hard and it's just like, you know, you need that place. Um, do you pray? I do. I yeah. do. Absolutely. I, I, I pray even if, if my eyes are open and I'm talking out loud, I know who I'm praying to yeah. and I know what I'm praying for. And, yeah. and it happens. I have to, that's, 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 um, that is everything to me. Everything. 
You know what's so funny? We have, we have a lot of people that go viral every year, but the ones that really are special is when you sit down and you talk to them and they tell you, I'm a firm believer in God, Jesus, the divine spirituality. Those are the ones that when they go viral, they stay viral. Everybody hmm. remembers them. They're going to remember you for a long, long time. And it's just getting started. So keep on bringing out those TikToks and those reels and showing us the best dressed silver fox we see on the internet. <laughs> I keep doing it because it's just amazing. And you take such good care. We, we didn't touch that either. We, we, we kind of skirted around it. But physical fitness is something that you hold very dear. Yeah, yeah, that that's that that's part of my discipline. Um, you know, I've always been into it over over my years. Um, but I, I'll never forget it was it was after my daughter was born. Yeah, uh, she was probably a few months into it, and and I was eating anything I wanted, uh, drank drinking too much. Um, I just wouldn't look right, and I looked at myself in the mirror, and I'm like, "Who in the hell are you?" <laughs> and and I just said, "That's enough. That's enough." And and um, I started getting back into working out, and it took me a while to find my niche and, and how, how to, you know, how to get back into it. I, I read a lot. I still read a lot about it, yeah. you know, um, and I've got a lot of experience under my belt for doing it for, you know, my daughter's going to be 14. So, um, so over almost 14 years being back in the gym and, and that's my grind. You know, that's, that's, that's what gets me through my, my job. I'm there at five in the morning to about six 30. And then I go to work from seven to six every single day. Well, Monday through Friday for the most part, but that, that gym is, is needed. It's absolutely needed. So, yeah. Yeah. You are quite a remarkable man, Mr. Ramos. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> I look forward. I look forward to being able to watch you, your star grow, because now you have the light. You know, like you have, like you were a light yourself, but now you have the light. And now it's like, okay, use it well, use it well, use it well. And don't, um, I want to add, don't be afraid to talk to your, your audience, your following. Don't be afraid to do that. Talk to them, tell them. You know, sometimes vlog in, let them know what's going on. Like, because what it is, is people want to know, like they're, they're going to eat this up, but people want to, you know, just, it doesn't have to be long, but just, hey, it's a five o'clock in the morning. I'm in the gym, get up and get up and, you know, do, you know, take care of yourself, be strong and get on off. I'm, gl I'm glad you brought that up. The wifey was telling me the same thing. So you need to, you need to start doing some live feeds yeah. and stuff like that. And I'm like, it, you're absolutely right. I, I'm, 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 I'm taking baby steps here. You know yeah. what I mean? But. But thank you for saying that. And, and yeah. I'm glad you affirmed it because that's 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 going to be my next thing. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead and post post that up there. It could be a reel, you know, a reel is 60 seconds. You can. Hey, I'm at the gym doing what I got to do. Now, remember, you're awesome today. Let nothing stop you. The discipline will get you through every time and then boop, off and it'll go viral, too. They're like, oh, he said this. Oh, he said that. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> so don't go anywhere. But nope. this concludes our conversation. Mm. So tell everybody again where they can find you online, social media. Online, so mostly Instagram guys, LRJ74 underscore PR. Uh, that's, that's where I live, that's where I bring my content at, that's where I'm spreading my spirituality, um, my, my goofiness, you know, a little bit of modeling, you know, a little bit of sexiness every once in a while, you know, um, that's where I live, so I mean, um, outside of that, I'm in San Diego, California, living in West Coast life. And that's where I'm going to be at for a while. Right. Don't tell nobody where you live. Them girls are going to be, your young wife will be real, man. <laughs> no girls will be outside Google on Google. your lawn. You better stop. Yeah. No girls will be outside on your lawn. You better stop playing. No. <laughs> no, but yes, it's, it was a pleasure to talk to you. I'm so glad that we got this opportunity to do this because. This was awesome. Thank you so much for inviting me. My first interview, this was, I got to be honestly, I was anxious. I was nervous. I don't know what was going to happen, but you made me feel right at home. I loved every second of it. So thank you for having me. Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, you have heard the vocal stylings, the vocal stylings of Mr. Loriano Ramos. Don't say, say goodbye, but don't go nowhere. Goodbye, everybody. So did you enjoy? I hope you did. Please like, comment, subscribe, share, and don't forget to cash at me at the Queen of Shade. I am your favorite content creator, right? 
Right. You want to see more of this content, right? Right. Cash at me. I love you. Mwah. I've got my black stilettos on. Don't you make me take them off. I'm assuming her position. Gonna show you I'm a boss. I've been given 60 seconds just to put my thing down. I'll have you wanting my stilettos by the time I turn around. Turn that TV down.